Howdy guys and welcome to night 47 of Big Brother Season 24's Overnight Feed Recaps and welcome to Cliff Notes as well and welcome to a new work week. Welcome to Mondays. Do y'all remember last Thursday? We were so excited about the twist that was coming up and the evictions taking place and saying, oh, this is going to be a crazy 24 hours. This is going to be incredible. Well, not so much last night. Oh, how the feeds have changed. Last night was brutal in terms of staying up and, and watching uh, these, not 10 house guests, watching five house guests talking because we still don't have the outside feeds. Uh, it is, It has been brutal, guys. Trust me. Tough, 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 tough. But having said that, I'm here to tell y'all what did happen. We had a little bit of strategic talk, not a lot, but I'll get y'all up to speed on what did happen overnight. Now, first of all, uh, I mentioned we lost the feeds night before last, uh, all night long. The feeds finally came back yesterday morning, but only for the insiders, not for the outsiders at all. Uh, now, having said that, and there's been a lot of rumors about maybe what was going on outside, Having said that, last night around, I think, 11.30 or so, Big Brother time, there was a little bit of a screw-up from Big Brother production. Just for a split second, we got a shot of the outside. And what did we see? Nothing. Nothing out of the ordinary, at least. Uh, a split shot of Kyle walking over towards the, the kind of outdoor patio area where it looks like uh, Alyssa was already asleep, everyone else was. Everything looks perfectly normal uh, in the backyard. Nothing at all out of whack. Nothing strange. House guests haven't been moved. Nothing new set up. Just regular old stuff going outside. But other than that split second, we haven't seen a bit of it outside. And uh, it's tough. It's tough to have only the five people indoors and think that they're going to carry the feats. They didn't do it last night. I'll just say that. All right. Lots of rumors uh, about what is going on outside. And the one that seems to make the most sense, the old boss hog uh, that I'll throw out there, is that there either was or the fear of uh, a wall yeller out in the backyard based on some people making threats to do so online and all that. And maybe they actually had one show up. We don't know for certain. Uh, but since the house guests can't come inside, uh, since they're locked outside, uh, instead of having a lockdown, the rumor is that maybe production has instead been playing some sort of music uh, to drown out, to discourage future wall yellers, uh, and that they're probably making the outsiders think that it's part of the, the festival atmosphere and, and a little bit of a punishment for them. It's possible. Now, here's the thing. If you're playing music, unless it's, I don't know, happy birthday or, or something that's non-copyright. Now, talk about torture. Just play that over and over again. But Unless it's something that's not copyrighted, they aren't going to want to show that on a live feeds because if they do, they have to pay royalties every time they play the song and Big Brother doesn't want to do that. So is that to what's happening? They're playing music to, to cover up any wall yelling that's taking place and therefore we don't get the fight feeds? Maybe. I don't know. I don't have any other good reason to, uh, uh, to, to justify the fact that we're only getting inside, but Incredibly frustrating. Uh, not a lot of fun. Now, we did hear, well, we'll talk about it. the insider saying that they have been hearing a little bit of the music playing outside throughout the day. So uh, maybe there's something to do that. All right. Now, before we talk about the live feeds, the ones that happened as much as we can, uh, just as a bit of a refresher, Joseph and Turner on the block with Joseph likely going home. This is for the outsiders. Uh, Terrence holds both the HOH and the veto. Uh, and I doubt he'll use the veto at the veto ceremony, which we expect, we think is going to take place today. Uh, at least before we lost the feats to the outside, it seemed like the plan was to get Joseph out. Now, if Joseph's been making his own pitches, maybe he's thrown Kyle under the bus. Maybe he's he's gotten Terrence Swade. We don't know. We don't have a clue. So for right now, we'll say Joseph is still the plan to go home. Uh, inside, a little more cut and dried. We've got Monty and Jasmine are on the block. Uh, Brittany holds a veto. Zero chance that she's going to use it. Although, it would be great if she did. And she forced Taylor to go up on the block and just said, hey, I'm just doing it to make good TV. Because that's what Taylor was saying when she wanted Kyle to use the veto, was that she just wanted to make sure she had good TV during her HOH week. I'd, I'd love it for Brittany to say the same thing and just, just remind Taylor, good TV is the most important, right? Uh, she's not going to do it. That 
Jasmine is a target to go home. If for some reason it wasn't Jasmine, Monty was going to be the backup target. They're both already on the block. So why would you, why would you change it up? They won't. It's, it's going to be Jasmine going home. But what makes the feeds a little more boring, a lot more boring, is the fact that Jasmine doesn't realize that she's a target. She thinks that Monty is, is a target instead. Uh, that Jasmine's just the pawn up there. So we don't even see a lot of chaos happening inside the house. Now I will say the leftovers inside the house have done a pretty good job. There were a lot of times yesterday when we had Jasmine and Michael and Brittany and Taylor all sitting around the table downstairs, just hanging out. And Monty was somewhere else. Well, I don't know what, resting, working out. I'm not sure, but Monty was away from the rest of the group. And if I'm Jasmine, I'm going to see Monty kind of distancing himself from everyone else and just feel that much more secure that, yeah, maybe I'm not really the target after all. So uh, they're doing a good job of at least playing up uh, that, that Monty's the one heading home. It's not, it's Jasmine. So, so there you go. So there's a refresher. Now let's talk about the inside feeds that we did have uh, yesterday. And again, that little bit of strategy talk a little bit. All right. Uh, I warned you just a little bit, uh, but let's do talk about the inside feeds. The insiders being the VIPs that they are uh, got a Mexican fiesta party. They got tacos and churros and little pointy party hats and uh, beers and, and canned margaritas to celebrate being inside, I guess, uh, locked away inside. Uh, oh, they even got streamers to put up everywhere. And so they, they, they sat around the uh, little island in the kitchen trying to figure out how to salt the rims of, of margaritas and, and trying out the, uh, uh, the the canned margaritas. The whole point, uh, I'm sure Big Brother giving this to him, is to get them just a little bit tipsy and in order to, to improve some of the content that we, we've got going on inside the Big Brother house. But I'm not sure that these five are the five that are going to get liquored up and go crazy and provide the content that, that Big Brother's looking for. Uh, Jasmine, Michael, and uh, Brittany, not exactly the heavyweight drinkers that, that you expect to, to run amok after uh, a big kegger or something going on. So, yeah, they, they tried, but uh, as Taylor pointed out at one point, she, she had a drink or two and said, yeah, this drink's just making me sleepy. So, uh, yeah, not so much uh, the crazy times after the alcohol. Uh, they did while they were sitting there drinking. They had lots of talking about drinking when they first started drinking, uh, the effects the first time they drank and stuff, uh, what they miss about the people outside, uh, wh what, what they think that they'll be doing in five years after Big Brother and all of that. Uh, as I mentioned, at one point, Taylor says that now she's had a little alcohol. Now she's just a little bit sleepy. Michael's talking about the fact that he just does not want this season to be boring. Well, it wasn't until about 48 hours ago. The last 48 hours uh, is your worst nightmare, Michael, uh, and ours as well. Uh, <laughs> here's it. He doesn't want it to be boring, but you got a group of five people standing around in paper party hats, eating churros. Later, Tyler, uh, Tyler, later, Taylor uh, is asking Monty for Benefiber, and Monty said, are you constipated, Taylor? That's the kind of evening that you got going on. So, Michael, rhetorically, I'll ask, what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> they, they tried. They tried. Uh, there's talk about Tiffany from last season hope, hosting the veto competition. They're excited that she did it. I still don't know whether she was there in person or it was a videotape, something of her hosting, or, or maybe more likely was it was live, but she was on camera broadcasting from somewhere else. I would think for COVID and all of that, they would not have wanted Tiffany inside. I, I don't know for certain, but they were excited that Tiffany was there uh, participating in their, their veto competition. I don't know if she did it for the outsiders or there was someone else for the outsiders because we just don't know. Uh, but, but she's talking about there. They're all talking about that a little bit. Uh, Monty, at one point, talks about how much he wishes he had finished season 21, my season, to see how it all worked out and everything. And uh, I, I think Brittany at one point said, yeah, maybe you shouldn't have. Yeah, watch it up until, I don't know, day 92 or so, but Monty, and, and you'll be great. Uh, but he does mention my season just a little bit. Uh, there's talk about the music that's playing outside. They can hear it. It's just a, 
it's just kind of a beat, uh, a pulse type thing and not a lot of anything that you can make out. And here's the thing, when you're inside, that storm door is closed. You can hear things going outside. We could hear people yelling, uh, the workers, things like that, but everything is muffled. You can't really, nothing is distinct. And I think it's the same thing with the music. They can hear the bass beat uh, and they can tell music's playing, but beyond that, they can't really figure it out. But they're wondering if it's a punishment. Uh, Jasmine's saying maybe they're playing it just so they can't sleep outside is a little bit of a punishment. Uh, and I think it's Monty who mentions that it's been playing for at least an hour and a half or so, uh, which would mean it had started around nine o'clock Big Brother time. And they're saying it sounds like it's just the same song playing over and over and over again. Yeah, that'd be pretty irritating, wouldn't it? All right, we've got more non-game talk as they talk about who of the house guests they think is the funniest, the cleanest, the sleepiest, uh, on and on. I didn't record them all because I didn't really care that much. Uh, but they, they are talking about that. Uh, Taylor is hoping that the uh, the dryer fest outside uh, is absolutely miserable and they're having a miserable time. Maybe. We wouldn't know. All right, Brittany's already, <laughs> Brittany's already asleep. As you can see here, Brittany's fallen asleep uh you know she did have two drinks i think uh but she's already asleep but the group is taking pictures around her eventually she wakes up and says, oh yeah yeah you guys are funny so uh, they're having a little fun with her uh and her calling an early night everyone called it a little bit of an early night uh, at one point we've got pretty much everyone in bed people kept getting up all night long they'd say they're going to bed and then be up for a little bit but we got taylor pretty much the only one still up on the stairs at one point she's looking around she's counting things that she sees for uh, possible future competitions uh, she's also kind of whispering to to us to herself uh, saying that jury management really has to to start full time this week uh, she's mentioning that she would love to be hoh next week but says she doesn't really think that she can because she can't be the one uh, to send terrence home uh, she's hoping that joseph is hoh instead well don't be hoping too much on that taylor uh, and she's also figuring that she needs to to win at least one or two more HOH, uh, HOHs and, and a lot more vetoes. Yeah, that's definitely the path of victory at this point. You got to win the competitions to to control your fate going forward. Uh, she does that at one point. She She's sound asleep in the bathroom on that little couch that's in the bathroom area. She's out. And it's after 10 o'clock. Uh, so you are allowed to sleep. But theoretically, you can only you're only allowed to sleep in the beds and normally big brother will call you out if you fall asleep somewhere else last night big brother doesn't even didn't even care she slept there for i don't know 15 or 20 minutes till Brittany came in and and she woke up uh the house guests are in bed by one o'clock or so big brother time but they just keep getting randomly getting back up i, I kept waiting that maybe they were going to have some kind of a uh, another leftovers meeting everyone except jasmine they didn't do that. Everything's worked out. There's there's nothing more to discuss at this point in time. Uh, so they didn't even have a, a late night, middle of the night meeting, which they normally have done all season long. Uh, at one point, we do have Michael and Monty uh, sitting around the, the kitchen island, eating a little bit and just talking to each other. Strictly non-game talk, uh, but they are talking about learning new things, uh, asking questions about the LGBTQ and African-American communities and wanting to learn more things and, you know, kind of Monty talking about from his standpoint and Michael talking about from his standpoint. It just did a good conversation. One of the good things that you get in Big Brother is people exposed to, to each other and new people and everything. One of my favorite parts is all the people I got to know while I was in that house. Uh, so again, just talking in the middle of the night, uh, as you sometimes do. Uh, Michael, a little bit later, is up in the HOH room. He's talking to the cameras, uh, giving a goodbye message to uh, to his fiance, to his cats, to Rihanna, to Sarah, Jessica Geller, uh, anyone he can think of. He's calling out, saying good night to. Now, I said there was just a little bit of strategy talk. I wasn't lying when I said little. Uh, we did have Michael talking just a little bit strategy talk saying, look, Brittany is absolutely my number one. He wants to sit in final two with her, as would I. I think Michael's got to feel like he can Brit beat Brittany in a final two, right? I mean, surely so, unless she just turns it on second half of the season. Uh, he likes Taylor. He'd love to take her to a final three. He is concerned that if it was himself and Brittany and Taylor in a final three, Taylor would be much more likely to take Brittany to a final two instead of Michael. I think that's absolutely correct and valid. But he's also thinking 
two things. One, that he feels like he could beat both Taylor and, and Brittany in those final competitions. So he would be the one to get to make the decision. And two, yes, Taylor would probably take Brittany over him, but he feels like no one would want to take Michael at this point uh, to final two and then have to face the jury. And I think he's probably right on, on both regards. Michael's got this part uh, figured out. So he's got his final three figured out. And he says, if I could get Terrence in the final three, even better. But it's not going to happen. I, I agree it's not going to happen. Uh, so that's what he's doing. He is talking a little bit about Monty. He says, you, you viewers, you're probably yelling at me saying, why don't you take out Monty? And, you know, isn't that the better choice and everything else? Uh, and, but he's saying, but the thing is, I just can't trust Jasmine at all. She's got to go. Uh, so it really sounds like I've talked in the past, uh, in the past few days that he's worried about sending Monty out the door. And then if the other side of the alliance didn't turn on him, they're all still solid leftovers. He's viewed as the traitor. He can't compete for HOH next week. And so he feels extremely vulnerable as a result of it. So there's a lot of strategic reasons why I think he doesn't want Monty, uh, want to go after Monty this week. But here Michael's expressing a, a whole different situation of it's not so much that he doesn't see Monty as a threat, but he just doesn't want Jasmine in the house anymore. He can't trust her. Uh, he just doesn't like playing the game with her and he wants her gone. So th there's a lot of things driving uh, the decision to send Jasmine out the door this week. And so uh, uh, finally, I think he gets called to the diary room. He comes back up a little bit later for a very quick little goodbye. And he, he mentions, says, look, I hope, uh, I hope y'all all know, yes, I recognize Monty is a huge threat and I may have to go after him at some point because of that. But I hope y'all know, even after the conversation we just had, how much I like Monty, that it's nothing personal. It's strictly gameplay when I have to go after him. And I hope y'all understand that. Michael's very cognizant of everyone watching out and, and the rest of the, the viewers watching and, uh, and questioning any time, questioning why people are being picked to, to be evicted and things like that. And Michael's aware and he's trying to make sure we all understand it's gameplay. We get it. Uh, we understand. So there you have it, guys. Again, <laughs> it was a long night of watching to, uh, to get to these little tiny pieces of strategic information, but it is what it is. We should have the veto ceremony, I think, for both groups today. I don't know how we're going to make it till Thursday. It's, it's, as tough as it is for those outsiders, it may be tougher for us as viewers. Maybe we get the live feeds back and we find out all kinds of stuff has happened and it'll be incredible 72 hours. We'll see. But until then, guys, I will be back tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, what happened overnight. Uh, I look forward to that. But in addition to that, it is Monday. So tonight, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, I will be doing Cliff Notes Live uh, on the, my YouTube channel. Uh, it's live. So Come out there, ask me questions about strategies, about my own experiences in the house. Uh, we'll talk all about Big Brother, this season, past seasons, everything else. Uh, come on out, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central. Until then, guys, y'all have a great Monday. SKD 143. Cheers, my friends.